Welcome to the second hour of Fresh Waves here on Whistle FM. We're going to be talking with Laurie McNaughton, or we are talking with Laurie McNaughton from the town of Wichert Stouffville, about reducing and reusing and recycling and the actual technicalities of it. For those of you who are just tuning into the show, before the break, we spoke about the paint can question. And I want to just go over that again for people who are just tuning in because that's one of the questions that I get asked most often when I say, oh, I'm having the recycling lady on. Oh, yeah, can you ask about the paint cans? So what is the deal with paint cans? So empty cans, if they're dry and there's nothing in them, um, you can put them in your blue box. Just make sure that the lid's off so the drivers can see that they're empty and they'll, they'll take them with, with the recycling. Full okay. paint cans, they need to be taken to, or with a little bit of paint in them, they need to be taken to a hazardous waste depot, um, which can be found in our recycling, the locations around York Region. Um, as I said, the closest one to us is on Elgin Mills Road in Richmond Hill. That's for the community of Stouffville. Um, for the northern part, there's one on Bales Drive in East Gwillenberry, as, Ra- as Ravenshoe Road in Georgina. All right. Is there still the one that was in Markham on Highway 7, just south of... Yep, on Roddick Road. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because that was... That was just easy when I was driving yeah. to that neighborhood. And there isn't one in Vaughan as well. Like, okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you a question about batteries okay. because I had the question and so did one of our listeners. So um, Karen had asked me in a Facebook message, how come we don't have a battery drop off like they do in Markham? I'm sure there's a whole bunch of reasons, but in Markham, if you go to any of the community centers or the library outside the door is a nice basket where you can drop all your batteries. And uh, personally now, when I'm in Markham, I take my batteries with me and drop them in Markham. Why can't I drop them in Stouffville? Um, Well, we just had our electronics recycling event last Saturday, and we do take the batteries there. Um, So we had a whole bunch of residents dropping off bags of of household batteries. Mm -hmm. They can also be taken to Hazardous Waste Depot. I know some of the stores, Home Depot, Cane Tire, um, will take them back as well. Oh. But um, we're actually working, as far as a new contract, is a curbside collection of household batteries. So we're working with the northern six municipalities of York Region to try and implement a curbside collection. So once or twice a year, you could just put them in a special designated bag that we would hand out and put them all at the curb for collection. That's actually a nice idea. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of batteries. Yep. <laughs> That's I mean, okay. Actually, I haven't dumped mine in a while. So I think, though, by and large, people are using less batteries. Is that a safe thing to There's say? There's a lot of rechargeable batteries now, which is obviously better because they last quite a while. And yeah, you don't have the waste. Yeah. But I guess you still see some of that stuff going into the garbage, don't you? Yeah. Unfortunately, people do still do still put them in. So we're, that's what the curbside pickup, we're hoping to educate everybody to get them to have a little side bag there and drop them in for the collection. And that would only happen twice a year? Probably, yeah. Just, just to make it worthwhile for the collector. Right. Because um, not every house would put it out, right? So, okay. yeah. All right, so you're going to the to the toxic place for a number of things. We had another question. I'm, I'm just going to get the questions over with right okay. off the bat. Um, old TVs with a tube in them. Yep. What do you do with them? Uh, same thing. You can take any of the region depots, collect electronics as well. Um, the town has two. We had one last Saturday. We have another one coming up October 5th at the town hall. And you can bring them there and drop them off, and they'll all be recycled. It'll all be recycled. All the parts are okay. recycled, yeah. So you just bring the TV to any of those places yep. and they, they take drop the part or do it? Uh, they send to? it to, yeah, we have a contractor that they send it to up in Barrie and yeah, they dismantle it all Isn't and recycle neat? it. They have a 0% waste. Really? Even yeah. on the old tubes? Yep. No yeah. one uses <laughs> They anymore? find a way to recycle it, yes. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. And then, of course, like we spoke in the the hour before, um, one of the things that people keep putting in their blue bins that don't go in the blue bins is styrofoam. Yes. Now, there are some places that will take styrofoam. Yep. In Halliburton, they take styrofoam in Halliburton County. Do they have a contract or are they just hoarding it somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about Halliburton. Um, I know the region will take at the drop-off depots large pieces like from fridges and things like that. Just no takeout containers. Okay. No um, food containers. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Just as this, the large pieces. They do and this have is just drop-off. because there's no market for s- used styrofoam? Yeah. Recycling sold by weight. So as you can imagine, it would take a lot of, of styrofoam to... Um, 
to, to amount to anything to be able to recycle it. So styrofoam is really one of those yucky ones that you would probably not recommend people use or use as little as they can. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things being looked at as a single use material that try to find a home for after. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Because it was very popular and it still is when you get takeaway containers. Yeah. It's still very popular to have them be styrofoam. Yeah. And I believe that's just because of the price. It's, It's cheaper to buy those in bulk to have those as takeout containers. And then when they go into landfill, are they just... Like it takes years for them to break down, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. Sucks. So that's why we're trying to push people to go the compostable or recyclable takeout containers. Okay, that would make sense, I guess. Yeah. That's where everything should be going towards that. So, all right, give us the bottom line about the blue bins. What goes in and what doesn't, other <laughs> okay. than styrofoam? So basically, it, uh, and film plastic doesn't either. That's a big problem as well. Film plastic. plastic like is- plastic bags, the Ziploc, the Ziploc bags, the packaging around water, pop cases, all that filmy type plastic should just go so in the garbage Saran as wrap well. and stuff like that too? garbage yes oh, yeah okay. it's a big problem it really causes a problem with the sorting facilities at the region it r- grinds around the wheels and and gears and causes a lot of downtime for them so yeah keep it out of the blue box basically what goes in is is food packaging plastic bottles glass metal cans Okay, like when that. you say food packaging, I'm thinking there's a lot of saran wrap over top of the styrofoam yeah, plastic and your meat food stuff. packaging. <laughs> yeah, plastic food packaging. Yeah. So when you're talking plastic food packaging, what are you talking about? Water bottles, margarine containers. Oh, okay, those kinds things of things like that. Yogurt yeah. containers yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So what about when you get the box that has that plastic film, like there's a thin plastic sheet? And then it's the rest of it's cardboard so that you can see inside the package. Does that piece of little plastic get? It's uh, it's garbage. It's yeah. Garbage. Yeah. Okay. Anything filmy should go in the garbage. So the Costco packaging, just to use Costco as an example, because it is everywhere, but you see it often in the big bulk things that they use and there's cardboard around it, but then there's that plastic film that goes over the item and it's, it's yeah. what, what do they call that? A blister pack or something yeah. like that? Yeah. So that plastic cannot be recycled. The, anything filmy. If it's hard. But that's pretty hard. Yeah. That if stuff. it's a hard, like the, 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 the bubble stuff that's really hard to, you need scissors and a knife yes. to try and get into it, That's fine. That can go in the blue that box. Can go in? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. just the soft filmy stuff like plastic bags. Okay. Wow. I guess it would be kind of tricky to figure out what's hard enough to go in there and what's not. Well, so when they yeah. have the CD and the CD takes up, you know, one third of the space of the packaging that's around it, but that stuff you can barely get through it with scissors. Yeah. That can go in the that green can, bin. Yeah. The blue in the bin. blue bin. Yeah. Blue bin. Yes. Blue. blue, blue. Yes. Okay. Yes. All if right. it's hard, yeah. Hard plastic is just that filmy, like the Serrani type plastic that, that doesn't go in there. Okay. All right. And glass jars yes with or without lids without (laughs) take the lid off the lids are still recyclable they're just two different streams so they need to be separated in the blue box in the blue box you know that's another thing you 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 take for granted that here we can just stuff stuff everything in the same box my sister lives in switzerland you take your box to a depot on saturday morning because most people work during the week and you got to stand there sorting this stuff all out green glass brown glass clear glass blue glass if there ever is such a thing plastics newspapers papers cardboard cardboard can't go in with the paper yeah I mean, we are really lucky here that we just get to dump it all in one in one bin yeah bin. and it's sorted out at the other end yeah for sure okay so we've got jars without lids yep. but cans when you cut off the lid you can still put that lid inside the can and that's okay yes okay. yeah because it's all metal because it's all metal. as opposed to glass and metal all right. Yeah. And then it goes in your green bin as well. What about blue bin. broken glass? Blue. Yeah. <laughs> blue. Blue bin. Blue bin. Yeah. Broken glass. Uh, broken glass is actually quite dangerous to the collector. So we ask that you, you, you could wrap it up really well and actually put it in a cardboard box and label it, seal it up and label it for them to saying broken glass so they know that they'll, they'll keep it aside. 
So it does go with the recycling? No, does? it goes in the garbage. It goes in the garbage yeah. and it's broken. Yes. So you shouldn't the dump your recycling from high heights into your blue bin and say, oh, well, it's glass. It's going to the same place. Yeah, anyway. no, broken glass is just because it's dangerous. Um, we've had quite a few collectors get hurt by dumping a blue bin and the glass flying out and hitting them in the face or cutting them. So it, it's just a health and safety issue. Okay. Yeah. So don't break it when you put it into the blue. That's right. Bin. Don't Be throw nice. it in. <laughs> gentle. All right. We're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we'll be hearing more about all the different color bins. And I'm going to get them right. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Hi folks, Kim Mitchell here. You know, however you choose to get around your ATV, your snowmobile, your boat, car, if you have a motorcycle, all these things take 100% of your attention and skill to operate safely. Alcohol impairs that and bad things can happen. So be smart, okay? You know what I'm going to say next. This message brought to you from the Safe and Sober Awareness Committee. And we're back on Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Brent Masson. We're speaking with Lori from the town of Wichert Stouffville. And she works in the operations department doing all these wonderful things with um, recycling and green bins and garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to come up with a color for garbage, but it's just garbage. Um, all right, let's talk about coffee cups because I know this is a huge problem in that... There needs to be better public education around these coffee cups. Uh, yep, for sure. And that's what I talked about. We talked about last hour as well, about kind of sending the responsibility back to the producers. Mm -hmm. um, so coffee cups do go in the garbage. The take They're garbage. Yes, the Let's takeout coffee cups. Let's put this out loud and clear. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> garbage. Those yes. Tim cups roll up your rim and all that. It's garbage. That's it's right. It's not... When it goes in the blue bin... Yeah. When it gets to the... With the a way of making them recyclable. Yeah. No, unfortunately, that wax lining to kind of protect you from the hot beverage inside, um, it's just, it's not recyclable. It's just, but there's so many, so many restrictions on contamination now, it's just not a market for that type of product right now, just because so of that Starbucks, wax part. Starbucks, McDonald's, Tim Hortons, Yeah, they're all, all the same. and each of their cups are a little bit different. So they all kind of have their own version and their own kind of formula for making their cups. So they're all not even the same. So everybody kind of needs to get together and make some sort of cup that's either compostable or recyclable that, that can go through our system. And, exactly. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Because I have seen um, bamboo ones and things like that where yeah. they say that they're decompostable so you could put them in the green bin, actually. Yeah. yeah. But unless all these big companies are buying into this, yeah. it's a waste of time anyway. Yeah. And some, some of them are saying that they're biodegradable. Um, biodegradable actually doesn't break down fully. It just breaks down into little... It does still have some plastic in it, so it breaks down into small pieces. Of little pebbly is, stuff. Exactly. So you want to look for compostable. Compostable. Okay. Yeah. So you've got your coffee cups. The lids, though. Lids are garbage as well. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lids are garbage as well. Seriously? They're, yeah. They're just like, too this is small right up there to with go the mahogany through. table that she turned into a red lacquer thing. Exactly. I'm having heart palpitations here because this, <laughs> that's so sad. Yeah. Unfortunately, again, same thing. Each one is a little bit different type of plastic and they're just, they're just not recyclable. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's too, very small to go through the, or the system, the sorting system. All right. Well, you know what? I think it's time that um, schools start having mandatory field trips to uh, waste sites, mm -hmm. to the dump. Yeah. It's the old trip to the dump. And they need to drive through. This summer, if you're up north and the dumps that people go to at the cottages where it's easily accessible and it's a standard thing to do, yeah. make sure, listeners, that you take your children there so that they understand that things have to change. Yeah. And it's the young people going into universities and coming out of universities. There's got to be a solution and it has to be a global solution and a global consciousness. If you don't understand what a landfill site looks like, go and see it and realize why we've got to change this. Yep, absolutely. And actually on our website, we do have little videos, little cartoon videos of what happens to your recycling and green bin material after it's collected. So it's kind of interesting to, che to check out. Well, I out. do know that there are some people who are still um, 
and I won't use any names because it might embarrass them, <laughs> although maybe they should be embarrassed, who do not recycle because they think everything goes in the garbage. And that's not the case, is it? Yeah. No, absolutely not. It all goes up to York Region. There's a massive sorting facility that they've just upgraded um, and it's quite something to see it's belts and magnets and everything gets loaded onto a belt and it's sorted by computer screens and magnets and it all goes and at the end it's, it comes out in a great big tu- uh, cube that is ready to be picked up and shipped off to who knows where but that's probably a subject <laughs> for another show well they have different different buyers that will right. that come and, and collect it and yeah and do yeah. their thing with it Because apparently you can make some really interesting things out of stuff that comes from the blue bin. Yeah, yeah, like like, plastic water bottles or like polar fleece material. So blankets and yep, hoodies and all those comfy clothes that you wear. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there's tons of stuff that can be made. And carpet fibers too for certain carpets that come from that recycled stuff. Exactly. Isn't that neat? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's so. the thing that kind of makes me think, wow, this is really creative. There's, there's <laughs> a lot of good potential here. Okay, so uh, we basically covered everything. Is there anything we left out? Cardboard. Why do we have to break it down and wrap it up and stuff? Why can't I just put it in my damn green bin and a blue bin and stomp on it? Um, y- you can. Um, it's just the size restrictions are, again, health and safety for the driver and the size of the truck. It's easier for them. It doesn't get jammed in the truck when it's compacting everything down. And it's easier for them to pick up a certain size. You um, you can put it in your blue box. Just make sure that it's like uh, under four feet. And when you dump the blue box, like it easily falls out. Because sometimes oh, I so see... So stomping it stuff. in there is yeah. not really the <laughs> If it's best so jammed idea. in there, then chances are you're keeping it till the next question. Okay. We did get a... A question from Jack, and he wants to know why he's not supposed to put all the shredded paper in the blue bin. Um, So that should go in the green bin. You can put that just... What? Yep. You can put that in a clear bag just beside your green bin. And as long as the collector sees that it's all shredded paper, it'll compost down. Um, It's basically just too small to recycle all the little pieces of shredded paper. Um, It gets jammed in all the sorting. It's all gummed up and jammed in the sorting equipment. So We've got to have you on more often. This is just amazing. Okay, so shredded paper goes in the green, green bin. bin yes but Clear not really in the green bag. bin yep beside the green well bin. i mean if you ha- depending on how much you have if you just have small amounts you can put that in the in the green bin like just if, if you're shredding one by one or ripping up paper you can put that in the compostable bags in your green bin but if you have from a paper shredder just keep a clear bag inside it and we get you get one bag per, per collection wow Oh, you learn something new every day. <laughs> I've got some pretty big clear bags. I mean, we're talking a leaf bag. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. they're they're right. They're yeah, they're the standard clear bags. I think that you buy. They're... Okay. Yep. So yep, put it there, and uh, they'll take it for your green bin, and it'll all be composted down. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. So now that's we've basically covered the blue bin. Okay. What about the green bin? Because the green bin is a little confusing to me. Okay. So, yeah, green bin is basically food and paper products. Anything that you know will break down, then so should go in your paper green towel. To- uh, not toilet paper, but if yeah. you have a toilet paper the roll. The rolls, yeah. The rolls should go in the green bin. Yeah. Not in the blue bin. They can go in either, but, yeah, they can go in, in Cause the... Because some of them, they have... The, the paper actually gets really stuck, stuck on, on the it. Roll, yeah. So that goes in the green bin. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And paper towel, napkins, things like that. That all goes in the green yeah. bin. Yeah. Yeah. Parchment paper for the oven. It's kind of waxy, so that would just go in the garbage. It's got a wax film on it, so that would just be garbage. It wouldn't break down completely. Okay. See, someone told me, no, no, that goes in the green bin. What about the paper from meat? When you get the meat wrapped up at the butcher store, that that brown paper same or thing paper. there's wax in it so it would just be garbage it's there's the wax garbage. lining on it yeah okay so it'd be just garbage as well all right let's talk about the dreaded pizza boxes for a okay. minute okay <laughs> because everybody wants to know about those dreaded pizza boxes okay so pizza boxes they prefer if you cut them up put them in your green bin just because the grease and extra you know pieces of cheese and the food just soiled through it um causes issues for the end result for cardboard just because of the grease on it okay. um so they are compostable if it's fairly clean you could put it in your blue box just make sure there's no food residue the line pizza box liner should go in your green bin because they usually have the most amount of food stuck on them um but yeah if it's fairly clean and there's no grease stains or anything like that then you can for sure put them in your blue box okay 
I mean, do you guys publish an encyclopedia about this stuff? We do, actually. (laughs) I've seen the one-page sheets, and there's always, inevitably, when I read the one-page sheets in whatever county I happen to be in, I look at down, the the question that I have is not answered. Yeah, yeah. Um, We do have our waste collection calendar. Um, It's sent out to every household in December. Um, it's I've online. Got one of those. Yeah, there's lots of unanswered questions. Is, is there? <laughs> like what? <laughs> okay, gum. Okay, gum is just garbage. It's garbage. Yeah, yeah, it won't break down. Really, even though you're chewing on it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. maybe that thing it they used to tell you if down. you swallow your gum, it takes it seven years to digest. Right. It might be true because <laughs> it won't break down. True. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't just an idle threat yeah. made by children yeah. at a very young age. <laughs> exactly. Oh, they funny? knew what they're talking about. Okay, so the gum goes in the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. We also have our mobile app. Um, which has a search tool on it as well, okay, King so Street, and it has a schedule, it has Ping reminders. Street. Yeah, that's the town app. Yeah, you it just sort of doesn't that. relate to anything, so I never remember the name of it, yeah. because Ping Street just doesn't say anything town of which you're yeah. like to me. Yeah, and then that, um, well, also, it says you the schedule, it'll send you notifications on what week is it, if it's garbage week, if it's just blue and green, yard waste. You can set it up to send you notifications to remind you to put it out by 7 a.m. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. We have to take a break. And I want to take a break now, even though we could wait a few minutes, because I just want to go through a list of other things so that people understand what's going in the green bin. Okay. And we'll do that right when we get back from this break. You're listening to Fresh Waves on Whistle FM. I'm your host, Bren Masson, and we'll be back with Lori and recycling right after this. So stay tuned. <laughs> 